hello everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing well i'm fully aware i haven't posted a video in a few weeks i'm very very sorry about that but we're gonna get into exactly why on this video in a nutshell i've just had a few weeks of feeling a little bit uninspired within myself um and just not really in a motivating headspace which is not something i want to project onto you all i'm absolutely fine and that really leads on into today's vlog and this vlog is primarily going to be called and focused getting back on track now this is something that i have actually said so so much in my fitness journey and i'd say literally like since the beginning of the year i have been so on track and on my personal progress and just adopting a better healthier lifestyle and just overall well-being um and i have been doing really really well but i know there's something in march there's been something in the air that i just have not been vibing with and it happens it really does happen um and it's not to say that you know my fitness habits or my health habits are phasey that like they're not a part of my life they really really are but um i think we all go through times that are a little bit testing and we just slip off i literally took a past the past few days just sort of realigning you know in two weeks gyms open hopefully <laughs> um and it's not that like i don't know my why i know deep down why i do what i do and why i want to do what i do and why i want the best possible life and lifestyle for myself just sometimes i cut myself a little bit of slack which we all should do and if anything it motivates me even more to throw myself into the next week and just get on it again like so much so yeah that's where i'm currently at last week um i had a very very busy week at work and if you don't know already i do work full time um alongside what i do on social media and sometimes it just gets busy and when i'm busy and i'm in a, this productive headspace I really do struggle to like diversify my focus into other areas of my life. Sometimes I really, really do struggle to put myself first. So eating's been off, training's been off. I've literally been in a calorie deficit for the past like month and doing so, so well with it, like proper routine, figured it all out. And then the past few days has just been like not eating enough, snacking when I didn't need to, a takeaway, like, I have takeaways it's fine everything in moderation is fine but i'm at the point where i just want to look after myself and i want to be able to look after myself consistently and just get the best possible results out of my nutrition and training so after that huge ramble um we're getting back on track and i know so so many of you are currently in the same boat i spoke to a few of you on instagram and a few of you have said you have felt exactly the same and with gyms opening in just two weeks again fingers crossed there's no time better to prepare and get yourself sorted for returning back to the gym and working on your best self i mean you can still be in a relationship and have a hot girl summer so over the next two days i'm going to take you through some of my top tips to getting back on track the way i just bring myself back after a few days of slipping off a little bit and how i just completely realign my goals and just get back in that headspace um and i do hope this video can help some of you so if you do enjoy it please leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to subscribe more vlogs will be coming because vlogs are just my thing anyway so my biggest tip um when getting back on track and just staying on track as well is preparation if you are not prepared and you are not you know set to succeed whether that be in like fitness or your nutrition or your work or any other important aspect of your life if you are not prepared and set to succeed it's so easy to slip off track with that being said i am currently at aldi um, which is where i do my food shop i'm just gonna head in and do my food shop for the week and that's my biggest way of preparing it saves money because i do it all at once and i'm not like popping out to the shop or you know if i've got food in the fridge i'm not getting a takeaway um and i also prep for the next day um but i'll go into that later we'll do some prepping either later or tomorrow when i get home i'm going to show you everything that i picked up what i have in my weekly food shop so i will catch up with you back home 
so I've literally just got back from food shopping and I'm just gonna show you what I picked up. These are the kind of staples I pick up every weekend for my week ahead. I got some of these, these little roast chicken bites. Oh yeah, if you didn't know, I spoke about it on my Instagram, but I've recently started eating chicken again. If you've been watching my previous videos, if you followed me for a while, you'll know that I had been pescatarian but due to like a meat allergy. But it turns out that like slowly implementing chicken back into my diet has worked totally fine. So I'm now able to like obviously consume more protein. Obviously chicken's like a really, really lean, high protein meat. So I've got two packs of those. Just, you know, when you want a little salty something something and then... I'm an actual child, so we have some just little yogurt pots, just when you want something sweet. I'm gonna turn the camera around for this because this isn't working. Then I've picked up two of these um, just packets of ready cut chicken. They're like cut into mini fillets because also if you follow me on my Instagram, you'll know that I am an absolute freak and cannot handle raw meat. So they just go literally straight in the air fryer, ignore my iced coffee with literally two sips out of it because I really want to like coffee and I just cannot drink it. It's not for me. And I've got one of these big punnets of strawberries. Honestly, this is like one of the reasons why I love Aldi because it is so, so cheap for such a big punnet like this. And I have these every single morning, like maybe two or three strawberries cut up into my protein porridge, my protein oats. Two like tins of these and Honestly, peaches like fresh are so, so much better. But for ease, if I want like a sweet snack um, or a dessert or something, I'll have half a pot of these. And obviously they're quite high in sugar, but you know, everything in moderation is totally fine. So I do always have like half a pot of these. So I've got two of those for the week. Should I fancy one of them for dessert? That little crumb is really winding me up. With every meal, I try and have some greens and I usually go for tender stem broccoli, but they didn't have any, so I've got two packs of these fine trimmed beans, a little punnet of plums. Plums are a really, really good, sweet, low calorie snack. I have some little chicken breast slices. I love these in a bagel with some pickle. Two packs of steamed basmati rice. These are just the microwavable ones. However, I do usually boil my rice, but sometimes like if I'm working and I haven't prepped food, um, I'll just pop one of these in the microwave and have half. And absolute child. I've really, honestly, I'd say maybe in the past like three to four months, I have developed a chocolate problem. Like I never used to be much of a chocolate kind of girl. However, I've absolutely become obsessed with it and nothing, like no amount of chocolate will ever satisfy me. So I've got these little chocolate mousses. Um, they're really quite good. I just have them like once a day, it might be for like dessert after my lunch or after my dinner and they really just hit the spot. And then that way I'm not eating a whole bar of chocolate. I can really like control myself with those ones. Um, I have sweet potato fries. So just quickly, like for every lunch or dinner, I will have chicken and either rice and veg or potato and veg. So I have sweet potato to make sweet potato fries from. Um, and I also have these miniature potatoes, which I cut in half, um, parboil, and then stick in the air fryer to make little wedges, little chippers. Last, but honestly, not least, these are the main structure of my diet. I have my packs of bagels. So I actually have like two, ba two bagels a day. I've been trying to have like more littler meals more often rather than just snacking and just filling up my calories with rubbish. I actually have two bagels a day. I have a cinnamon and raisin one um, with jam on it, just a bit of olive spread to like make it a bit more <laughs> moist. Don't unsubscribe. Said I have my sesame bagel with chicken in it. So yeah, that pretty much is my food shop for the week, literally. Honestly, stop wasting your money. Stop putting your money into processed foods, into takeaways and stuff, because this all cost me 20 quid and I will, this will do me for the week and I will literally go and spend 20 quid on a pizza from Domino's and it just doesn't make sense. And it's when I do this that I actually realise how much easier 
it is to look after my body and how much cheaper it is to look after my body than to just fill it with rubbish that makes me feel rubbish. Hello everyone, it's the next day now. It is Sunday today and I have quite a fair bit planned today. When it comes to being in this mindset of getting back on track, I really do need like a couple of days if I have them to sort everything out and just make myself feel like I'm starting from a blank space again. When I have a clear head, I am so, so much more proactive and productive. So the plan for today is I am going to make myself a training and meal plan. Not really a meal plan, but just kind of a generic idea of what I'm going to be eating with the food that I got um, over the next, you know, few weeks. Um, just resorting out my calories, my macros. I'm, I'm kind of know what I'm doing with that because as I said earlier on in the video that I'd been in a calorie deficit for about a month or so. So I, I do know what I'm doing with my food, but it's mainly my training. I mean, I feel like I'm at the point now where I'm really bloody missing the gym. And I think everyone is at this point now. Like I'm so, so fortunate. I have like so many weights at home. You know, I push my sofa back in my like kitchen lounge and I have all this floor and my mirror there where I train. Um, and it is a good setup but I am really, really struggling with the motivation to get up and use my equipment. It's only really been this past week and it really gets on my nerves because I know I should be making the most of what I have. Which is exactly why I'm going to be making a two week home training plan. So something I'm gonna stick to using the weights and everything that I have, the equipment that I have. I'm literally gonna schedule in my workouts as if it was an appointment in my diary. So I'm gonna get my diary out, I'm gonna plan what time I'm training when um, I know that I have a very, very busy couple of weeks at work again. But yeah, that's my plan. I'm going to make the plan for the next two weeks, sort out my workout split, what I'm going to be training each day, the exercises I'm going to be doing, really like do some more research and figure out how to best structure my training that best support my goals or in pursuit of exactly what I want to achieve with my training. So I'm really looking forward to that. I love having a structured plan and exactly what exercises I'm doing when I walk into the gym. I'm most confident that way. I am most productive that way. And that's how I make the best out of my sessions. And I love tracking my weights and tracking my progress as the weeks go on. made a training plan um for the next two weeks just to keep me on track and to keep my training consistent until the gym's open so i'll just run through my split because i know a few of you have been asking what my current split is from home and this is kind of the split that i have been following for the past few months since obviously gyms have been shut and this lockdown um however i've just like really gone through and put in all the exercises sets and reps that suit my type of training i have so monday i go in with push and i do chest shoulders and triceps um and then i always start off with my compounds and go into unilateral movements um more isolation same with all of my workouts i always start off with my compound um, because they require the most energy and then i always go in with my unilateral and my isolation movements afterwards so on tuesday we have pull which is back and biceps then i like to split up my leg day into a quads and calves day and also a glutes and hamstrings day um this is just because i feel like i can really like focus on the exercises that are targeted at those specific muscle groups rather than training it all in one session this works for me i do it when i'm in the gym and also since i've been at home so wednesday i have quads and calves and thursday i have a rest day which is just between the three day split and on the friday and saturday the push and pull i mirror exactly what i did at the beginning of the week and then on sunday Sunday's leg day. Sunday's always leg day for me, even in the gym. Um, I go in with glutes and hamstrings. Honestly, my screen is just embarrassingly dirty, but we're not going to talk about it. So that's the plan I'm going to follow for the next two weeks. And then what I've done is this is my planner. This is where I plan, you know, all my stuff for work. It's literally like 
it's my everything. <laughs> I um, plan all my stuff for work, all of my content, all of my ideas, my appointments, everything. And I've literally put in these workouts as an appointment in my diary. Okay, so getting back on track, we have done our food shopping, I've planned out my training for the week. I now know exactly what I'm doing, what I'm training, what exercise I'm doing, what reps and sets when I go into my lounge at the end of my day and it's time to train. Because when I don't do that and I don't have this like set list to follow or the workout that I'm doing, I end up, you know, doing my few favourite exercises and then after like 30 minutes, I'm like, oh, I don't really know what else to do now. So... I'll do something fluffy and then I'm done because I've done something at least. It doesn't work like that. I don't run off how much steam I have. I run till I'm at the end of the list. And that's discipline um, because when I don't have something to follow, I'm relying on motivation and sometimes she's not there. I put a question box on my Instagram and asked you guys what kind of things you need advice on when it comes to getting back to the gym or just getting back on track and i've just kind of like summarized them into categories so first of all is how i meal prep um before i started eating chicken um and just like meat in general i would probably meal prep one to two times a week and i would like bulk cook for the rest of the week and then i would just put it in a little container in my fridge i don't freeze it i put it in my fridge and then i would just heat it up in the microwave however i'm a little bit of a weirdo when it comes to chicken um, and will only really like literally for no scientific reason so I think you can literally keep chicken for like three days don't quote me on it but I don't like leaving chicken in the fridge I like cooking it fresh um, so at the most I will cook the day before and eat it the day after I won't like bulk cook for like two days more than two days in advance I tend to make dinner um, and then I'll just double up on what I'm having for dinner and put the other half in the fridge and have that tomorrow for lunch. So I'm not getting to lunchtime the next day and thinking, oh, I don't have anything ready. I can't really be bothered to cook. I don't have time to cook. Work's really busy. Um, so yeah, I always make my lunch now with my dinner the night before. And what I make is really easy. Like I pop it in the air fryer, my chicken, I season my chicken, pop it in the air fryer. We'll go for it later because I'm going to do some meal prepping for tonight's dinner and tomorrow. I think depending on your diet and what you eat, meal prep is quite flexible. But I do think it's really, really important because as I said, if you don't have lunch prepped, don't have like dinner prepped or food in the fridge ready for dinner, um, you don't have your veggies cut up and you don't have, you know, everything really quite accessible, you're more inclined to finding quick ways out. A few people have raised like the topic of going to the gym alone and I'm going to kind of tie it in with gym confidence. So I usually train on my own. Every now and then I might train with a friend um, if I fancy it or if they're free or if we've planned it. But most of the time i'll train on my own in the gym i completely get the standpoint whereas like if you're going to a gym that's you know full of people that you don't really know and you're there on your own you kind of start psyching yourself out that people are watching you and people are thinking oh what's she doing kind of thing and i think the most important thing to remember is that like you are there for yourself so is everyone else there and on the rare occasion that they are looking what you're doing you have to accept the possibility that maybe they're looking at you because you're doing a really cool exercise that they haven't seen before and they're like wow i want to give that a go or maybe they're looking at you because you're looking bloody good you know you have to remember that you're you're there for yourself and no one's going to hold you back but yourself so definitely say if you're struggling with confidence and going to the gym for the first time do your research get an app there's tone and sculpt app like that is so, so great for beginners. When I first started weightlifting and the app first came out, I got that and that honestly boosted my confidence so much because Chrissy would be showing me how to do the exercises. I'd have a list of workouts to work through and that was just great. Or alternatively, if you don't really have a budget to be spending on like a workout plan and stuff, there is so, so much free inundated content online. So much research that you can do. There's videos on how to use all the machines and everything. With knowledge comes confidence. I now waltz in the gym with my tripod because I'm filming my workout, with my music on, in shorts, leggings, sports bra top. I don't really care what I'm wearing as long as I'm covered up. I just go in and I crack on because I'm there for me and no one else is going to show up for me apart from me.
another one that I relate to so, so much. And someone has mentioned about when you mess up your calories and how you recover from that. So either you go like majorly over your calories, you have like a crazy cheat day. Honestly, that food guilt, I, I know that feeling. You think, oh, why have I done that? And how am I gonna bounce back from that? But you have to remember, if you have been working towards something so consistently for weeks, and then you have one day, that one day is not gonna ruin all the progress that you've made. And you know, there are ways that you can come back from it. You can either implement more cardio the next day, or you can like eat slightly less calories the next day. But in my personal opinion, I don't think that's necessary, to be honest. One day is not gonna ruin your progress. Just get back on it, do the things that make you feel good, do the things that make you feel proud of yourself again, and just forget about it. Um, you can always pull it back one day, it's just not the be all and end all. And the last kind of subject that kind of became apparent to me was starting back at the gym after not training for a while. Honestly, I completely understand how you're gonna wanna go back into the gym and you're gonna want to straight away be the person you were when you first walked out before all this lockdown malarkey. All I'm gonna say is you are human. You need to give yourself a break. You need to ease back into it gently. You need to let go of your ego as harsh as that sounds you need to let go of your ego and you need to just ease back in slowly this will prevent injury imagine we've been out of the gym all this time you go back to the gym and you get injured and you can't train be sensible go back to the gym ease back into your exercises start on moderate weight and week by week up your weights again so yeah they're just a few things that i wanted to kind of address because there's some of the things that I have to remind myself all the time, especially when I get in a bit of a rut like I have been. And you know, we have so much to look forward to with gyms opening, so I hope I don't look like an absolute clown and Boris comes out and says that gyms aren't opening, touch wood, I can't be bothered for that. Now I'm gonna go downstairs and I'm gonna prep my lunch and dinner for today and also my lunch and dinner for tomorrow. Let's go downstairs and let's start. <laughs> enjoyed it and that you found some of these tips for getting back on track helpful i know this style of video was slightly different and probably a little bit more raw than what i'm used to filming um but i really did enjoy sort of opening up about how i found the past week and hopefully relating to some of you and that we can just get back on track together it happens if you take anything away from this video i want it to be that preparation is absolutely essential in staying on track and just succeeding in anything you do but especially your fitness journey if you did enjoy the video please leave a like down below and comment if you want to see more videos like this don't forget to subscribe and i will see you in my next video see you later